Please enjoy this feature presentation of the Crooked River Radio Network. This program is rated for all audiences. Hash Eggs and Football is sponsored by CrookedRiverRadio.com. Crooked River Radio is an internet radio station that is live 24-7 playing top 40 hits from the 60s through the 80s. You can find us on Live 365, Simple Radio, Roku, Radio Garden, and even Alexa, as well as our website. Come on and join us on the Crooked River. Welcome to Hash, Eggs, and Football, where we talk about this week's games as Monday morning armchair quarterbacks. Here's your hosts Eric Nanarone and Pat Morrow. Good evening. Okay. Good Let's evening. Try that again. Okay. Good evening and welcome to Hash Eggs and Football. I'm your host, Eric Nanroni, with Me. Yes. Pat okay. Morrow. Pat Morrow, yeah, that's right. Pat Morrow, yeah, that's me. <laughs> We're off to a rousing start. Maybe I should unmute my mic. Yeah, I wondered about that. Yeah, I that I did a whole take with my mic muted. Yeah, there there ain't nothing like live podcasting. Yeah. <laughs> and no kidding. just today I decided, well, we haven't been on Spreaker for a while. I'll just go ahead and start that up. So we're we're actually live on Spreaker too. <laughs> and then oh, we screw up the okay. And that makes it even better. That's right. Hey, at least I waited until the music stopped. <laughs> and maybe an extra minute, but okay. So what do we got going today, Eric? We got a um, review of Ohio State versus Indiana. Browns versus whoever the heck they played. Broncos. And I think we're going to go heavy on the Bengals and Ratbird because uh, there was a little bit of an upset. Yeah, there. Quite a little bit. Oh, yeah. Almost. Because they, they did, the Bengals didn't just win. They rolled over them. Yeah, that was, that, that was quite a game. I watched pretty much all of that. It was uh, interesting to say the least. Yeah, it was. I. It was probably the best game of the um, day. Then I don't understand. Did you watch any of the second, uh, the 4 o'clock slot game? Which one was that? The Tampa oh, versus the Chicago. Bears. Yeah. I, I, I don't understand what the league and the network CBS was doing by... Uh, putting that game as the national game of the week in the 4 o'clock slot, that was a joke. Like, they could have put any other game. But, honestly, the Bengals and Ravens should have been in that slot. Versus, I know they're both East Coast teams, but they should have been both in that slot. That would have been a way better game to put in that slot than the Bears, who are a joke within themselves. Yeah, well, the Bears, you got to realize that, that uh, Justin Fields is young, and he's not going to be, uh, he's not going to be a Tom Brady. He's not going to be uh, a, um, hey man. Peyton Manning, or anything like that. He's going to be a rookie just come out of come out of college a year ago, and wanting to play football. And it just to me, it's watching. I, you got to keep in mind, and I've said this before on other other venues. Justin Fields in Chicago 
I am scared to death for that poor guy. Yeah, we've Chicago about has ru- Chicago has ruined another quarterback uh, so badly that I haven't heard his name in the league for a year. And it went, you know, they put him down a road and picked Fields up, and you oh, got yeah, you got the same talent or the the same um, coaching staff, pretty much that ruined the first, ruined the other one. Yeah, I know who. Yeah, uh, Trubisky. Yeah, who Mitch is Trubisky. Now the backup in um, Buffalo. And I just, I don't know. I just but hate them. I just think just, they they're going to ruin him too. They don't have an offensive line, and I mean he wasn't the starting quarterback when the network deemed that the game of the week at the beginning of the season. It was Andy Dalton, who we know and seen a lot of, because he was... Well, Dalton wasn't exactly the best quarterback I ever saw either. He no, had a lot exactly. of issues. But they put that as game of the week They when they made the schedule, and Dalton was the quarterback. Well, uh, to be honest about it, I thought... To, I thought the game of the week from the get-go was uh, Baltimore and Cincinnati. Although yeah. it wasn't post at the beginning of the season, who knew? Yeah. I mean, but I think we all knew the Bears were going to be bad. But, like, Dalton, Dalton or Fields, they might have a good defense, but their offensive line is garbage. They have one okay receiver. Well, other than that, there's nothing. Yeah, there, they have nothing there. It just is what it is. But as far I as guess we'll jump into the Ohio State game, um, I was impressed by the first half of the game. I was disappointed in the second half because I feel like in order, if they wanted to, if they want to try to make the 14 playoff, they needed to keep scoring and get style points. They needed, that that game should have been 70 to, 70 to 14. That's what I was predicting from uh, when I saw the, who they were playing. Mm-hmm. I mean, they scored And then they, they, they let off the, the gas half. pedal there towards the end. They, they scored 42 in the first half and ended up with 54. So, they, it's ridiculous. They need to. St- I get it, sportsmanship and all, but they need they need to stop that. It's time to. If you want to make the playoff, you need to put your foot on the gas pedal and not let off. If you score eighty, right. then go- you're yeah, still num- you're still number five. You weren't going to get any st- style points from that, evidently. But it is what it is, you know. It's I don't expect. Uh, um, you you don't you can't expect that team to to just hammer it every every day because once they see they've won, you know, they're once it gets down towards the end and they think they've won, they're just going to let up. I mean, look at what the Browns did to you in that in that uh, Denver game. If I would have if that would have been any other coach, they would have got another touchdown. They were that close. Mm-hmm. But you know, let's take a knee at the last. Oh, it's it's third and third and three, and there's only what t- 27 seconds left. Let's just take a knee and be done with it. Yeah, I don't know if that's that's uh, um, fixing the uh, score or what. But you know, it is, there again, that's just the way it was. You don't want to risk your uh, major players. Although, and you're already on your backup quarterback. Well, um, there's been some news just this afternoon about the Browns and what's coming and what's not. The, oh, uh, um, I missed that. I've been at work all day, so. I guess from what I saw, they got Jack. They got Coglin back, or he's he's practicing again. Okay. Nick Chubb has practiced for the first time in two weeks. Um, so that's two really good ones. Mm-hmm. Uh, Wills is still a little questionable the other side of uh, Conklin. Mm-hmm. Um, as far as the uh, 
and pretty much everybody else there licking their wounds I guess they didn't say anything about him about hunt um, they said that Baker was still day-to-day -day, that they didn't know if he was gonna play or not but I, I've seen in order to um, uh, really heal up from that injury, Baker needs four to six months, according to Mary Kay Cabot from the plane. He's Daylight. not going to get that, and it's not going to happen. They're going to put him in there until it ruins his arm. Uh, they're they're going to ruin a quarterback, which I think they're just... I think they're trying to ruin him because they realize he's not the franchise quarterback. Yeah, I've thought that for... After about the second or third game in, I'm beginning to think that I'm kind of glad that they didn't sign him. If they right. would have signed him, there would have been five years of this. They're going to have to tank again because they're going to have to be in the top ten to get another quarterback. Yeah. And do we really want to see another season? Well, you can get, you can get quarterbacks. You just got to, you know, they're, you do, do it through... Uh, free agency and all that. And there's been there's actually been some decent ones coming down the pike. I mean that's even how we got uh what's his name, uh, um Keenum. Was Keenum. Yeah, in the free agency. Free agency, yeah. And there's been some other ones that are that are, were acceptable. Hell you could even went went after uh what's his name from um Green Bay. Oh Rogers? Yeah Aaron Rogers. You probably could have got him and with it for the right price, and I know people that would have that are Browns fans that would have killed to see that. Personally, I, I don't, yeah, I don't know if I would the, do that. The I, thing of it is, when you change quarterbacks, you're changing your whole system, and you're going to end up not being as good for a year or two until somebody everybody else gets used to him, and that's why I, mean, I that's the big reason I don't want to see him change from Baker. I, it's not changing systems. It's just you're still getting changing the quarterback a major, adjusted into the system. You're you're still changing a major part of this of the system. What those I, guys I'd are used to. I'd rather change the quarterback than the coach, though, because changing the quarterback at least you still have the system in place, and the other players that would be around him are um, are used to the system that they're playing where if you're changing a coach but have a quarterback you're completely different it's just throwing the a quarterback is just the final piece to the puzzle to to utilizing the play calling in the system where the um coach is putting in a new system and adding a whole, like, I guess, bigger part of the puzzle than just the one bigger half of the puzzle than just the quarterback is. Well, any that time sense. that you're going to change like that, Eric, you're going to have issues, and I don't myself want to see that happen too much. I don't want to see us see us have to take three steps back in order to catch it up. I, I don't either, but I don't think Baker, and we talked about this on another show during last season, I don't think Baker is the guy, because I don't think when he gets pressured and the guys are blocking... I don't think he can see over the line. And that that was a problem with him coming uh, out of the draft. We've had short quarterbacks before that do okay with that. Look at what's his name from uh, Drew Brees from down there in, in uh, uh, New Orleans. He was on, he was about Baker's size. I think he was 6 or 6'1". Six that was a hell of a quarterback. Did he have any problems seeing? Oh, I don't know about that. Uh, yeah. You have, think, you have some uh, things on the Browns here that, that you have excuse makers. And I heard one the other, the other night from Beckham, who does not, he's getting to where he really doesn't impress me at all. 
I watched him in that uh, Denver game. He was supposed to do a slant. He, he runs out. He starts to cut. Trips over his own damn feet. He's got a blocker behind or on the side of him. Trips over his feet. Gets hit in the side of the bl of his blasted. Uh, he gets he gets hit in the side, and misses the ball completely. Very very open wide, catchable. Are you ball. talking or no, Beckham? Yes, Just, Beckham. Okay, I didn't hear you say that, but um, yeah, yeah I agree. Then the one play where he dropped the ball that was right in his chest. Yeah, you, know, you you start. He, there's just no chemistry there. He doesn't have no. any. Didn't have any with uh, Baker, and he's not got any with Keenum. I, I think, like I said last week, and maybe the week before, these quarterbacks are intimidated by Odell. I just think and it's time to. They, he needs to go to a team that. They'll never that admit he's gonna it, fit in but on. he needs to go to s somewhere where they have a quarterback like Tom Brady, or a proven quarterback, where they're not gonna put up with his crap. Because clearly, Baker is intimidated and doesn't know how to stand up to him. Well, I don't think it's just Baker. And, well, I mean, Baker and Keenum, but if Baker can't stand up to him as a starter, Keenum's not going to as a backup. Because I, I have a feeling Odell looks at him as he, what he is, the backup, so he can you know, do whatever he does. Um, and there's nobody to put him back in line. Like, somebody needs to be there. The quarterback needs to put him in line because I could guarantee there's attitude that he's giving the quarterback and for not throwing him the ball, even though he doesn't deserve it because uh, he drops it too much. Because I think the last three games, Odell has had passes that were right in his chest, and he's dropped them. Yeah, I got to admit, I, I agree with you there. I don't know why the sound is jumping all over the place. Let's mention the phone line here while, while I'm thinking about that. We went through, uh, the, the station here went through quite a bit of uh, uh, trying to get an issue fixed with the phone lines and we've now got them fixed so our phone lines are open for any of the shows that we're doing the phone number is 440-372-4688 that's 440-372-4688 and uh, if you want to call in and uh, add to the conversation here you're more than welcome we do have the phone lines open We'll take your call, whatever. But now, anyway, getting back, Eric, it, I'm just not. Uh, I'm just not sure where, where the. I, I don't. I've really gotten to the point. I don't think Beckham's going to ever fit here, even if they change to to a, to another quarterback. I just don't think the chemistries are. So it's time yeah. to put him down the road. I agree. We've lost. It's, we've lost uh, better players. Yeah, I mean, yeah, Bernie Kosar, uh, number one. I don't know about that. I mean, I think that was a joke that um, Ber uh, Bernie was cut, but, you know, I wasn't alive technically back then, so, you know. Yeah, well, but, you had to understand the situation. I was there. I understood it, and it was one of those things where... It was a money thing more than it was anything else, and they thought that Bernie had lost his his, his youth, so they brought in his his college roommate, which was Vinny Testaver I mean Testaverde, and uh, the rest is history. But anyway, that's neither here nor there. But, yeah, I think it's time uh, for them to move on from Baker, see if they can get um, somebody in the draft. I mean, the, 
There's guys. I look at Russell Wilson. He's the third round pick. I saw some trade stuff on him today. I don't remember what it was, but I I saw the I saw his name pop up. I just didn't didn't get a chance to read it. There was supposed to be some trade rumors or something with him. Uh, I as we're talking, I can look that up because no the other thing think. is we've got uh, this is actually uh, um what I consider one of the best best weeks of the of the football for the Browns coming up. Do you know what that is? Uh, Brown Steelers. Brown Steelers. Good morning! Good afternoon! And good night, Pittsburgh! I had to know, do that. Do you know where that clip actually came from? Yeah, that, that was a, pen, okay. a, a Penguins. Um, yeah. Uh, Philadelphia Penguins. Somebody said it then. When they that got was, eliminated from some playoffs or something. I'm pretty sure that was... I actually... Believe it or not, I actually found... Oh went, went to... Uh, I actually went to YouTube and and found that whole clip of that uh, of that game. There was, a, there was about a 15-minute clip, and at the end of it's where that was. And I took and yeah. snagged it and brought it back here and edited it. Uh, I'm pretty crafty when it comes to that stuff. And it's the same thing that's used on some uh, other radio stations. Mm-hmm. Yes. And yes, uh, it is. even the Pittsburgh Sucks tune, I actually found that uh, that's an original cut of mine. I, I have that whole song. There's an extended version of that that goes about six minutes. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah. That's how, that's how much of a favorite Pittsburgh is for me. Oh, yeah. But anyway, we got Pittsburgh coming. The question yeah. is, what's going to happen? If we play uh, like we played for play to Denver, there's a pretty good shot of winning. And the, oh, yeah. the nice parts about this is you may have Chubb back. And we, if you don't have Hunt, you can use uh, Jackson in the, as the other, the second back. Well, and I, I mean, think you're going to be just fine. Both uh, Johnson and Kelly are pretty good. Um, uh, Johnson that, tore it up. That was yeah. all. That was all there was to that. They to- he tore it up. Oh yeah, and I I honestly think he be a competent backup if we didn't have Hunt that the Browns could easily put him in to 20 snaps a game and he can get 50 to 70 yards easily. Yep. Well, I... They just have so many running backs right now that he gets limited time. Wonderful, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. That, the Browns never have that. But, you know, as far as I've I've said this on shows before, and I'll say it again. You can win with win with a mediocre quarterback, but you got to have talent on the other sides. And I think we've got the wide receiver core we got is is second to none. I think that's probably one of the best in the league. And the wide, the of course the running backs, and we all know how I feel about that. Yeah, I, I, I don't know. With the receiver core, though, with because of Beckham, if they're actually that good, because I still think Beckham isn't. Yeah, but but not with with, with, with Landry. With, without Beckham, you've got still got Landry. You've still got Peoples Jones. Um, I I don't know where he's at though, because I know he got hurt. Um. I yeah, I'm, got, I'm still waiting yeah, to see what's going on with him. Anyway, you you've got a decent, uh, you know, on paper we should be a we should be a seven and O team right now. Mm-hmm. You got uh, Higgins too. Yeah. Um. So yeah. it'll be interesting to see what they do with uh, Hooper at the end of the season. Do you think uh, the tight end? Do you think it's time to move on from him? And just go with uh, the He is getting kind of. I kind of. 
I don't see him or Anjoko here at, here next year. I think they're going to probably move on from both of them. Because they have a young guy, Stephen Carlson, who um, we're getting a phone call. All right, uh, we'll answer this. Hold that thought, Eric. Good evening. You're on uh, Crooked River. Hey, great show tonight. Thank you. Who's this? What's your first name? Oh, this is uh, this is Rickard. Rickard? Where are you calling from? Yes, Rickard. Hey, I'm calling from uh, Harrisburg, uh, Virginia. Oh, cool. What can, what can we yeah. do for you? <laughs> you guys want to hear my beaver voice? <laughs> oh, we got a jackass. <laughs> Goodbye. <laughs> well, at least you took the time to call in. Thanks for calling in and don't call back. Hey, it's worth it. <laughs> yeah. What's that? But I, I said, hey, it was worth the call. <laughs> yeah, thanks for helping me help on us know the phone line works. Yeah, yeah. I, I, was saying, I thought it was going to start off as a... Uh, it started off as a good call, then he hesitated and went into that yeah. voice, and that just went... Okay, anyway. Typical internet. But, <laughs> yeah. Hey, again, at least we got one call. Even if it's a prank call. Hey, that's two calls. In yeah, two that's right, and on two different lines. <laughs> yeah. Huh. Oh, brother. But anyway, with the Carlson thing, um... It, he played pretty well. He was the third string tight end last year, but um, he got hurt in camp this year. So I think if he would have been healthy, they would have been trying to trade Ninjoku a lot earlier. Well, I think, like I said, I think Hooper or uh, what's his name and that and Njoku are both gone. I, I don't see them being here another year. I think if the trade stuff would have happened, been able to happen, it, I think it would have. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. With you know, the trade deadline still about a week away, maybe two. So yeah, we'll, we'll see. We'll see. Um, the other thing that I wanted to bring up uh, that I'm that I've got kind of in the queue here. Did you hear about that Wake Forest and Army game? Yes, I did. Did you know that Wake Forest had the ball or ha ha was on offense exactly 15 minutes during that game and had 70 points? No. I they did slaughtered not. Army. They just absolutely slaughtered them. But uh, that was probably one of the highlights of the uh of the um, college football, college football side of this. It was uh, really kind of cool to, uh, to actually, every time Wake Forest got their hands on the ball, five, six plays and they were done. You know, they had scored. Um, the biggest game of the college football week, and I don't know if you got to watch any of it, the Penn State-Illinois game, where Penn State upset Illinois. I didn't watch that one. It came down to the end. Er, uh, no, that was a nine overtime game. That's it. it was oh, I had, heard, I had heard about that. I had heard about that one. And this is back-to-back -back weeks that um, Penn State has been upset. They were upset by Iowa two weeks ago right at the end. Um... And then this week in overtime. Doesn't uh, Ohio State get them next? Yep. Ohio State, Penn State at uh, the Horseshoe Saturday, 730. That's going to be a good game. Oh, yeah. It'll be interesting to see what Ohio State can do. Probably against, against the well, second best competition because Oregon, I think, is still going to be their best competition until 
they play Michigan or Michigan State. But who knows? Yep. Well, we uh, can probably start talking about uh, Cincinnati and. Uh, yeah, that's uh, where I was. There's going actually to a couple of games from the NFL that I want to cover yet. Cincinnati oh. and. Uh, um, Baltimore. The, the Ratbirds. That's what I was trying yeah. to think of. That was. Uh, that was an amazing game, honestly. And like I said earlier, it wasn't just like they kind of squeaked past. They they beat them. Rolled them. They actually 41 beat them. Forty-one to seventeen. They actually beat them. I was impressed. I mean, Jamar Chase, the rookie receiver, had like two hundred and fifty yards which set the record for uh, a rookie receiver in receiving yards. The one thing that I did see, though, with, as far as on, on Cincinnati, and it's something I've been talking about for a while, just, uh, um, Burrow's just Go got bro. no prote- He's got no protection. He's got, yeah. uh, he was sacked four or five different times there during that game. And I know that... Um, What's his name on uh, on the bang or on the the Ratbirds um, was sacked quite a bit too. I think they yeah, had, Jackson. they got him for like four or five. Yeah, I mean he didn't. I know his offensive line is kind of banged up, and I think the guy playing left tackle who used to who played for the Steelers for the longest time. Um, had never played left tackle before because he was a right tackle in Pittsburgh for like 10 years. But, um, so their offensive line was banged up too. But, yeah, that game between uh, Jamar Chase, the rookie receiver, and then uh, I think his name is Ben Uzama, or I don't know his first name, but I know his last name is Uzama, uh, the tight end. Uh, he had like two or three touchdowns, um, 50 plus yard touchdowns, too. So that was a really good game for him. And then the real, I don't think, I, I shouldn't say, I don't think. The Ravens, I think, only had. Two or three receptions from actual rod receivers, then Mark Andrews, their tight end, was their uh, the leading receiver for them. I think he had ten catches, where the receivers had two or three total. Yeah. Catches, but I mean, the they're so banged up. Even at running back, they lost the top two running backs in the preseason. Yeah, that's pretty tough. I don't know. The heck? I'm looking to see if we're streaming on uh, Instagram, and it doesn't look like we are. Hmm. I wonder why. It's turned on. Anyway, let's. Uh, yeah. We can probably head into the picks for next week if you want to. Um. Or is, there is there any other games? The other the only other mention that I wanted that I just thought about is what the hell happened to Mahomes? What in the hell happened to Patrick Mahomes? Where did he go? Did that Super Bowl get him? Did it eat him alive? I have no idea. Well, I don't know cuz he has a concussion, right? That team hasn't been the same for four or five games now and I I don't know what happened. I don't know. I, I I think they're coming down off their high of a year and a half of from winning the Super Bowl two years ago to losing the Super Bowl. And then I think people saw on tape what was exploited by Tampa and they now are taking advantage. But the for some reason, the Browns weren't able to. Uh, well, other it, than maybe seeing chemistry on defense. 
was the first game of the season. If they would have been three or four games in, they probably would have beat them. Yeah. But, well, it's another one we ain't got to worry about if we get all the way through the playoffs or into but, the playoffs. And not only are they falling off, but Mahomes got hurt. Yeah, the, yes. there was a couple of shockers there. There was a couple of shockers there this week. I don't remember. What did Tampa Bay do? Oh, they, they beat Chicago. I remember oh, yeah. that now. And the other shocker was uh, the Tennessee Oh, yeah. Um, the Tennessee game. That, uh, mm-hmm. if I remember rightly, Tennessee won, didn't they? Oh, yeah, they they did. They won by, like, 10 or 15, I believe. So we'll take that. Yeah, but, that uh, was... Who did they beat again? I gotta... I'm gonna have to look it up. I don't remember. Because I remember that was actually... It was a good team, and that was almost a unanimous all around on the other show um, Saturday, where I think everybody picked the uh, Titans. Yeah, I, I know I picked them. All right, NFL week seven, and that was let's down here a little bit. Where's my uh, Where's my Jeopardy theme song when I need it? Yeah. Um. But well, we're looking for that. I guess we'll devote thirty seconds to a minute to talking about the Cavaliers because they really don't deserve it. But hey, we're out of Ohio, so we might as well mention that there is a pro basketball team in Ohio. Okay, that's good enough. <laughs> I'd rather talk professional soccer. You're well, you're well, you're well, just way too kind, Eric. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> but, I, like I said, I'd rather talk professional soccer or hockey. Which, by the way, we're going to do... Um, once the season for football kind of winds down a little bit, we're going to be talking more hockey because I like hockey way more than basketball. Um, so, well, but, I guess we got New Orleans and uh, uh, Seattle coming up here tonight. I forgot about that. Oh, yeah, that, that, that should be a good game. All right, Cincinnati beat Baltimore 41-17. I'm looking for the Titans game. Uh, my wife just came in. I'm going to be a second here. Can you do me a favor and mute that? Thank you. That should get rid of my background noise. All right. Why isn't this giving me everything? So, but, I mean, like I kind of said on the Saturday show when it comes to the Cavs, and uh, I think it's time to get rid of the GM and coach only because the GM has really done nothing in the time he's here, Kobe Altman. He took over uh, when David Griffin was... Fired, um, uh, after the LeBron left. The uh, um, the ones that beat uh, or the can the Tennessee beat was Kansas City. That was twenty oh. twenty seven three. Joy. Oh yeah. The other surpriser was the Giants beat Carolina, and I had picked Carolina to win that. Oh yeah, so did I. I thought, uh, and I still think the Giants are a joke. They just got lucky. And Green, um, Bay, Green Bay beat the uh, uh, Washington, Washington team. team. Well, the Washington team beat the Washington team because their yeah. quarterback screwed them on two plays. I don't know if you watched any of that game. And but that's the one game that I was expecting, and it turned out just like the I expected, was Arizona and Houston. Arizona pretty much annihilated Houston. Mm-hmm. But... Uh, 
But anyway, Let's, just yeah. before we get into the picks segment, um, let's kind of, like I said, uh, talk about the Cavs for a couple minutes because I know we only have like 13 minutes, but we'll s- devote a couple minutes since we're, you know. Yeah, I, sp- I suppose. But I, <laughs> <laughs> you know, I'm not twisting your arm at all, am I? No. Uh, ouch, no. that hurt. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but anyway, um, I think it's time for them to move on from the GM and coach just because they've proven nothing. Um, other than no, this you, you've changed coaches. They, this guy that's that's with the with the Cavs now is a, he's just an interim coach anyway. It's yeah, he he's so been around the league better. a lot, and every team that he's been head coach of, he has not done anything. He's always been the placeholder coach, and then this GM had never been GM before. Like I started to say. Earlier, he took over for David Griffin when he was fired after LeBron left. Well, when Dan Gilbert didn't want to pay uh, yeah. David Griffin, but I th- bet Gilbert uh, regrets that because yeah. now having Altman and also the fact that right now he's not really doing. Uh, Dan Gilbert's not doing well because he had a stroke two years ago. And yeah, he's not. I don't know his condition. I haven't heard lately. But you got to wonder I who's heard, running the team. From what I heard, it's his business partner and his oldest son is getting is uh, getting more power yeah. behind the scenes. So. That doesn't sound good. For All right, we got uh, we got fifteen minutes to get the picks done here. Okay. So let's uh, let's drop into that and we can discuss a few of these. First up, we got Thursday night game is Green Bay at Arizona. Uh Arizona. Green Bay. Arizona all the way. I think they're they've got they've got it in them to beat. Uh, actually, they beat Houston. So. I like for him to take Green Bay too. Uh, then the next one is uh, this is an easy one: Cincinnati at the Jets. Yeah, yeah, the Cincinnati. Yeah. I think the Jets quarterback got hurt too, from what I heard. Which no surprise because he doesn't have receivers, an offensive line, running backs, anything. And then we got uh, Tennessee at Indianapolis. Oh, I would say Tennessee. Yeah, I like Tennessee anyway. I'll take them. We got L.A. at Houston. Which L.A.? Uh, probably the Chargers by the look of it. Okay. Um, it, no matter who, L.A. Yeah, I'll take L.A., I think, too. We i got to get this. My picks disappeared here. Um, anyway, I'll take, uh, I'll take L.A. Then we got a really good one. Oh. One of the top. Cleveland. Or Pittsburgh at Cleveland. The Browns. The Steelers. Yeah. I I don't know. Toss up, but I would I'll go the Browns this week. If the Browns get a couple players back, they're gonna beat Pittsburgh. Pittsburgh mm-hmm. ain't got that much. Ben's over the hill and yeah. one big hit, he'll be in uh, that's that's what I'm afraid. Room. That's why I don't think they should put Baker in this game. Because mm-hmm. if they put Baker in it's just gonna that's usually one of the toughest games. Between two rivals, that uh, happens twice a year, and I just hope that uh, I don't, you know, I don't want to send uh, Case Keenum to the Wolves, but 
I don't know that uh, it's a good idea to put injured Baker in there either. No. So, but if we get, mean, if we get Chubb back and your uh, and Landry plays, I think we got a decent shot at that one with everybody else we've got. Uh, Philadelphia at the at Detroit. That's, um, that's kind of a gimme game to me. Philadelphia. Yeah, I think Philadelphia's going to beat Detroit. Although it's at Detroit, which gives them three-point uh, home field advantage. Yeah, I don't think that's enough. Yeah, well, I'll take Philadelphia on that one. Then we got San Francisco at Chicago. <laughs> Jimmy Garoppolo and uh, Justin Fields. Garoppolo, San Fran. Yeah, if, if Garoppolo's not hurt, I don't, I don't know if he played well, last week or not. I think even uh, Trey Lance, the uh, rookie, is better than uh, Justin Fields because he actually has an offensive line. Yeah, well, well, I guess we'll see on that one. All right, there. Then we got. Uh, uh, then we got Carolina at Atlanta. At Atlanta. Those those East Coast teams are hard to pick. I I think Carolina. I think. Uh, I thought Carolina was going to win last week too, and they didn't. Well, yeah. So I think what I'm, I may just take Atlanta. On that one. Then the next game up is Miami at Buffalo. Buffalo. Yeah, give me Buffalo. Just uh, them giving Urban Meyer his first win last week. Just If they can't beat Jacksonville, they sure as hell ain't going to beat Buffalo. No. And we got New England at uh, the... the uh, LAC, whatever that is. LAC is the Chargers. Okay, that's the... So, so, oh, uh, actually, I would say New England. Oh, East, East Coast against West Coast, and you know I usually vote there. Mm -hmm. I'm going to have to take LA. But it's still, Belichick is still... Yeah, but there, Belichick's got to go to LA to play. Mm -hmm. And uh, sure. where I like that quarter, that that mount, what is it, Marks quarterback that Bill's got, uh, Mac, uh, is it Max? Oh, uh, yeah, and uh, Mac Jones, that's it. Yeah, Jones. Mac Jones, the kid from Alabama. I like him, but I don't think they've got enough to beat LA in LA. So we'll t I'll take uh, I'll take the Chargers on that one. Then we got oh this is good this is going to be another easy pick. We got Jacksonville and Seattle. Seattle. You think? Yeah. Well, yeah. Even without Russell Wilson, if he's hurt again, I would take Seattle and whoever their backup is. Then we got Washington at Denver. Denver. Yeah, I think I'm going to take Denver too. Although, Denver's kind of a half-and-half half team. I wasn't real impressed with them this last week with, when they played us. Plus, they, although they've had 10 days off just like we have. So, and Washington never does impress me. I'll take Denver, I guess. Then we got Tampa Bay at New Orleans. Tampa. I mean, yeah, I don't think... I, I don't think New Orleans is going to do well in that one. Then we have the Dallas Cowboys and Minnesota Vikings. Dallas, definitely. I don't know, man. Minnesota's pretty decent, of course. And again, they got that other washed-up quarterback there. Two Cousins. Yeah, he's kind of washed. I'll take Dallas on that one, I guess, just to just to make the other show happy. <laughs> And then the Monday night, uh, November 1st game, a week from tonight, is uh, New York Giants at Kansas City. Oh, that's a toss-up. 
Um, I'd almost take the Giants. I was about to say the same thing. And I got, actually, if that's it on the NFL, I got a bonus college uh, pick. Uh, Michigan versus number five Michigan versus number eight. Oh, wait, sorry. Number six Michigan versus number eight Michigan State. I would go Michigan State, and not because I hate Michigan, just because I think with their coach, who actually was a former Browns assistant multiple times, I think he just is better than Jim Harbaugh. So, Michigan State. Well, I've seen Michigan State play Ohio State and win. They they almost yeah. knocked them out of the playoffs the last time they played. So I think what I I think I'd almost have to take Mich- Michigan State, just not because of their placing in that, because Ohio or Michigan actually, they're number six, aren't they? Yeah, it's number six against number eight. I take Michigan State. I don't know what the odds makers are, but I'd take that one. I do think that. Uh, um, then the interesting one is going to be the weekend of Thanksgiving when we play that team up north. Yeah. And I'm probably going to, I'd probably pick Ohio State there. No I mean, what isn't that at got. Ohio State too? No, I think they, I don't think they play at the shoe. You might want to look that up. I think they play in Michigan. Yeah. I, no, I thought they played at the shoe. Because I think. I was, uh, actually, I might be possibly going to that game. So, I think it is at the shoe. So, we'll see, though. I'm going to look up OSU Michigan. OSU Michigan 20, 21. Wolverines. see where it's at. Of course they're going to give me issues. Heck with this. Okay. Let's see. It's in Ann Arbor. Oh, dang it. Okay. Ohio State Buckeyes at Michigan. So that'll be a interesting game. Oh, yeah. I, uh, Harbaugh, does, Harbaugh does not have any idea how to beat, how to beat Ohio State. Never I, has, never will. I don't... Everybody in Michigan loves Harbaugh, but outside of Michigan uh, and me, personally, I just don't think he's a great coach. I mean, uh, sure. I've watched... Um, which, I think I've said this on the air. I've uh, watched... There's a show called All or Nothing. It's uh, Amazon Prime Video's version of... Um, Hard Knocks, and they yeah. do um, a college team and NFL team every other year. They did Michigan a few years ago, and there was points where there, um, he was talking in team meetings, and players were looking at each other like, "What's this dude talking about?" Like, uh, they they didn't understand anything he was saying because he was so out there. Yeah. Well, hopefully he's he's probably come down a little bit more down to earth, but hopefully hopefully it's not enough to actually give any problems to Ohio State. Anyway, uh, uh, Ohio State usually plays up to Michigan, but, and I'm guessing you want to wrap this up. Who, uh, who do they play this week? Who's Ohio State play? They play... That's a good question. Uh, let me look that up real quick. Which I have the... Um, oh, it's Penn State. Oh, that's right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Not like we talked about that earlier in the show. You're gonna, uh, who, but, who are you going to yeah. take? And who, I, wonder, I wonder what Ohio State's favored by. It's... I take Ohio State, and I will check that real quick. Um, but I think Ohio State 
um, is just better, um, not just because we're the ranked. It'll be a close game. Yeah. But, uh, We just don't Ohio need State, no butt whipping. <laughs> yeah. Ohio State will, uh, end up winning that, um, by probably between, like, uh, three and six points. Um, let's see. Betting odds for Ohio State versus, okay. Okay. Sorry. Let's see. They say the over under is fifty nine for total points. Uh fifty nine. Uh, well, Ohio State will get fifty of those. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> huh. It would be nice if they would actually give okay. Okay. I can't find a good odds site, but, um, or a good site that actually gives odds. Okay, well, we'll, we'll just look it up. The line is, uh, 16 points. 16? Oh, that's yeah. more than I would have given, or less than I would have given them. I was thinking 21. But we'll see. We'll see how it turns out. We're going to wrap this up. I think uh, I got uh, something else I got to get to here. want to thank everybody that uh, listened in tonight. If you uh, find us on YouTube, please give us a like and a subscribe so you can uh, know when we're going to put a show on. Um, thanks to our, uh, uh, the, to, our, to our phone line caller for confirming that our... Uh, um, that our phone line works, even though you're an idiot, you we we still love you, and yeah. don't don't just don't call back. Uh, <laughs> and, uh, you, you know, at least if you're gonna prank, make it funny. And yeah, not, don't. I would have I would have really words. appreciated funny. Yeah, because like don't stumble your words or try to do a voice that you can't do, like that guy did. Yeah, well. We'll make fun of them. That'll be the end of it. Have a good yeah. week, everybody. We will but, catch oh, you. Well, let's do what we usually do. Tomorrow, uh, tune in 7 to 8 for uh, The World According to Elmer. It, that, is that right, Pat? Yeah, well, 7 to 8 o'clock. Okay. Uh, Saturday from 11 to noon for uh, Four Guys on Sports. And... Um, <laughs> Radioactive. <laughs> Radioactive Sunday night. I you, put myself on the spot. So if you missed the, if you missed the last radioactive show, you might want to take and find it on YouTube. We did a really good uh, interview with uh, uh, Courtney Nanarone and uh, Steve. St his name escapes me again. Gaglione. Gaglione. And yeah. uh, we talked about uh, small business and the. Uh, effect of the pandemic on small businesses really good interview i couldn't have done any better and uh, but if you get a chance next week we're going to use uh that shows where it's going to be all halloween we're gonna if you may if you get a chance uh, and you follow us on facebook uh, there's a couple of questions in the uh, facebook groups uh polls that we're taking so that uh, we can have some results uh, by the uh by the show and uh it's all going to be all halloween we're going to probably just dis discuss uh ghouls you know the best uh the best uh halloween or the best the best horror show um mcs and it's gonna, I'm, I'm thinking about trying to find some stuff on boris karloff and uh bella lugosi two uh major actors in uh in horror flicks, and even David Carradine, which a lot of people don't know, but he had a double rule. He was not only a kung fu artist, uh, like uh, 
his uh, sons were. Did you ever follow any of that, Eric? No. He no, was I uh, Carradine. There was the Carradine uh, brothers and and father were some of the best kung fu artists artists around, and it uh, they they were just kick butt. But they uh, they took and uh, nobody knew hardly knew that David Carradine, which was the father, actually did horror flicks. He actually did horror movies, and was in a couple with like Boris Karloff and that kind of thing. But time uh, get a chance to look him up. We're gonna do a, uh, a couple of segments on that. It'll be a fun show. It's all Halloween. What do you expect? And then we'll be back next week. Uh, Discussing the uh, the Browns in Pittsburgh and uh, some of the other NFL f- teams and uh, college, college teams that are, that played uh, this coming week. So y'all have a good week, and uh, we'll catch you later. That it, Eric? Catch you. Yep. Do you do you need me to? Uh, do you want to talk after the show or? Uh, I'm not really going to have time. I got a couple things I got to okay. do before that. Okay. So. okay. We will talk next week. Bye.